Mimi. Check out the magic trick I'm gonna do at Tracy's party. Okay. First, I put my handkerchief in the bag. Then I say the magic word, presto. Uh-oh. What was supposed to happen? It didn't work. The handkerchief was supposed to turn into a flower. I promised Tracy magic for his birthday. But I can't do it. Don't worry, you still have three days before the party. Just practice. I've been practicing for a week and I still can't get it. You're not gonna give up, are you? No. I've got an idea. Imagination. You're gonna ask everyone to imagine that the trick worked? No, silly. I mean, use some imagination of our own. We'll go to Magic Land, where we can find a magic trick that really works. That's a great idea. Way up in the blue sky, past the clouds, away we'll fly. Finding an adventure, we won't know where, until we're there. We're flying now and having fun. Say hello to everyone. Picture pretty rainbows, all right, here we go. I want you to come on along with me right it's now. Fun because you'll never know what Ladies and gentlemen, and see the finest magic land has to offer. Mysterious magic from far and wide and everywhere in between. Clowns and jugglers. Look at all the magicians. Right Maybe one of them will help me. Huh? Hey, look at that step, shop over there. Right up and see the wonders we should go check it out. How come? Because what better place to find a trick that works than a magic shop? Wow, I've never seen so much magic in my life. This is pretty. I wonder what it does. Ah! That was cool. Hey, look at this one, Mimi. I think it's perfect. It's cool looking, and these handkerchiefs go on forever. <laughs> if you do this trick, I guarantee everyone at the birthday party will be really impressed. Yeah. Welcome to my shop, ladies. Now take a look at this. I think this will be more to your liking. But it's just a dusty wooden box. Yes, but what's important is what's inside. It must be very old. Yeah. What's inside of it that's so special? Strange magic. I'm told it's very powerful. Sounds mysterious. Yeah. What kind of magic? The power to create the magic of happiness. Sounds like my kind of magic trick. Okay, then. We'll take it. Wow, I hope this magic really works. I guess we should open the box up and find out. Where should we do it? Might as well do it here. Doesn't look very special to me. It's just a worn out old sack. Is there anything inside? Nope. That's strange. This old sack doesn't even have a bottom on it. Huh? I'm not kidding. It won't even hold a piece of candy. Oh! Uh, oh! Look at that! Wow, it multiplied! Yeah, and I bet there's more where that came from. Why don't we see what happens if we drop the candy through the other way? Oh. Boy, I liked it better the other way. Are you sure that bag is empty inside? I'll tell you exactly what I see. Nothing. It's magic, just like he said. Let's try the other bags and see if they all work the same way. Okay. I think I'll try the blue one. Here's the candy. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. This bag changed the candy's shape. I guess each bag must do something different. I wonder what would happen if we dropped this through the yellow bag. Oh, wow! Now it's huge! This is great, but it kind of makes the candy hard to carry. Well, if we put the candy through the other way, it should go back to normal size. This is amazing! With these magic bags, I'm sure I'm gonna be a big hit at Tracy's birthday party. Let's go home. Pardon me, young ladies. Sorry to ask, but where did you get those bags? 
We got it from the little magic shop in town. The shopkeeper said it was very old. Do you know something about these magic bags, mister? Only that I have been searching for them for a very, very long time. Well, you can't have them. We bought them fair and square. Kitty, don't be rude. I'm sure he has a good reason for wanting them. If you look at my house over there, I'm sure you can see the reason for yourselves. Oh! This is the weirdest house I've ever seen. It wasn't always this way. This house was once the pride of Magicland. Did the bags have something to do with it? Yes, when my grandfather was a child, he thought it would be funny to use the bags to change the house for April Fool's Day, but he lost them before he could change it back. You want the bags so you can make the house normal again. That's right. If I could only borrow them, I could make all the necessary changes and have the bags back to you in no time. Of course you can borrow the bags, sir. Here, take them. And take your time. We're not in a hurry. Daddy? Is someone here? Yes, dear. Some new friends. You didn't tell us you had a daughter. Yes, I do. She's just about your age, but she's been very ill. You wouldn't mind trying to cheer her up while I fix the house, would you? It would mean a lot to me. Take us to her. You're very kind to do this for her. Thank you. She hasn't been able to play outside for quite some time now, and she's been very lonely. Don't worry. We'll have your daughter cheered up in no time. Lacey, these are our new friends. Hi, I'm Kitty. My name is Mimi. How are you feeling? Better, thank you. Then perhaps you're feeling well enough to tell me what you want for your birthday. It is the day after tomorrow, you know. Yeah, tell us what you want and we'll get it for you. <laughs> Back home for Kitty's birthday, we always give her a present that has to do with food. What do you have to go and tell him that for, Mimi? <laughs> so, Lacey, what do you like? Flowers. Hey, me too. <laughs> we think you're great, Lacey. Are you ready for your birthday present? <laughs> I'll need to take this flower just for a little while. <laughs> well, Lacey, happy birthday! Wow! It's so beautiful. I've never seen anything like it. How'd you do all this? You two are remarkable. Okay for the birthday girl. Yeah. Thank you. You've made me so happy. Mmm. They smell good. I wish you could make them last forever. Yeah, me too. Well, perhaps now that you're feeling better and the house has been fixed, you can plant a garden of your own so you can have flowers all the time. Daddy, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. You're gonna have the best flower garden Magic Land has ever seen. I'm just glad we can help you out. I hope you get well soon, Lacey. These bags sure brought a lot of happiness, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Just like the shopkeeper said it would. Well, all this happiness stuff has got me feeling hungry. You're always hungry. I say we treat ourselves to candy. Wait, I've only got one. Well, a short trip through the magic bag will take care of that problem. We'll just make 10 or 20 pieces. Hey, how come the magic bag didn't work this time? Kitty, did you know in the bag is an instruction label? What does it say? You're gonna hate it. It says it doesn't work outside, Magic Land. What am I gonna do about Tracy's party? Oh, this is terrible. And now it's time for Paradise Fun and Games. This one's called Clay Mania. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to the show! Today we're bringing you play acrobatics! The first trick up for our fearless foursome is the double divide! The idea is to end up with the cubes on one side and the spheres on the other. Let's see how they do! Uh-oh, looks like they got a little mixed up on the shapes. Let's see if they can straighten things out. They did it! Great save! Ta-da! Amazing! Let's give them a big hand! This routine is called Hats On, Hats Off. They've got to fly through the air and divide themselves by their hats. Let's watch! They did it! Great job, guys. A nice little flip there at the end. I give it a 10. All right, time for the grand finale. This time they must flip as much as possible and end up divided by colors. Uh-oh, there's trouble. But he recovers. Close call, guys. Paradise.
dice fun and games. This one's called Animals. Animals. All you gotta do is figure out the animal hiding in the cube. Let's go! Okay, this animal lives in the water but breathes air. Let's see some more. Alright, this animal also moves fast and jumps high. Have you got it yet? Oh, it also has a great big powerful tail. <laughs> but it's not a fish. Okay, now I'm starting to see what it is. How about you? Wow! <laughs> Did you guess right? It's a great big dolphin. That was fun. See ya! Wow, what a beautiful day. I could lie here in the fresh air for hours. Me too. I just love the springtime. We're gonna sunbathe. How come you brought a book? Mama gave it to me when I was looking for our blanket. She said since it's spring, we should both read it. Why? What's it about? Gardening? Well, it's about dirt, but not the kind you find in the garden. This book is called The Dust Monster. I think Mom is trying to tell us we need to clean our room. That's right. I thought the two of you could use some inspiration for your spring cleaning. But we already picked up our clothes and put our toys away. That's true, but springtime is when we do more than just tidying up. Well, I think our room is fine just the way it is. Well, any other weekend it would be just fine, Kitty. But this weekend we need to open up the windows and scrub the house clean. When we're done, the house will smell so fresh and clean just like springtime. You can't see dust. What'll happen if you leave it there? In the middle of the night, the dust monster will rise and make you sneeze till morning. If you don't believe me, read your book. It's all right there. Ah, uh, don't worry, Mimi. I think Mom is just trying to scare us. Of course, she doesn't usually tell us stories like that. Oh. Maybe she is telling us the truth. Maybe it wouldn't hurt to check out that book. I mean, what have we really got to lose? Okay, but you read it, Kitty. After what Mama said, the cover is enough to scare me. Mimi, are you sure you want me to read this out loud? Yes. Okay, here I go, but remember, it's just a story. As nighttime fell, the dust monster emerged from the dark corners of the room looking for the little girls so he could make them sneeze. You can relax, Mimi. If this story were true, the dust monster would have already shown up. Just look at our room. Oh no, Mimi, you've got to listen to this. And now it is your turn. If you are reading this and have not cleaned your room, expect your very own visit from the dust monster. You think it's going to happen? I doubt it. It's just a story. Now just put the book away, Mimi. Forget about it and let's get on with our sunbathing. Don't you think we should go clean our room just to be on the safe side? After all, it'll only take an hour or two and then we'll be out enjoying the sun again. I don't know about you, but I don't want to meet this monster in the middle of the night. Will you please come with me, Kitty? Mimi, there's no such thing as a dust monster. And the only way you'll ever prove that to yourself is if you don't clean today. Hmm, no such thing as a dust monster? I don't know, but I sure hope Kitty's right. Good night, girls. Sweet dreams. Night, Mama. See you in the morning. Hello? You're not out there. Are you Mr. Dust Monster? <laughs> oh, if we had just cleaned our room like Mama said, I wouldn't have to worry about the dust monster. <laughs> huh? <gasps> what? What? What was that? I could have sworn I heard something. All right. Quit being silly and pull yourself together, Mimi. See? There's nothing out there. 
I guess Kitty's right. I do have quite an imagination. <gasps> oh. Too bad you girls didn't take the time to clean your room today. Now it's my turn to have fun and keep you up all night. Look what you did to my sister! Wait a minute, don't blame me. Your sister got what she deserved. You both had fair warning that if you didn't clean up, you'd get a visit from the dust monster! So you just barge in here and scare her out of her wits? Oh dear, yeah, no, I didn't mean to do that! Well, what did you think was gonna happen? Of course you scared her, meanie! I only wanted to motivate you to clean the dust out of your room! Why do you care about that? What do you care if we have a little dust in our corners? If you promise you won't laugh, I'll tell you. It's springtime, oh. and since I'm dust, I really want to be outside watching the flowers grow. Not trapped inside the corners of this room. Sorry, I didn't know. That's okay. Not many people do. They leave us trapped inside under the furniture, and they never think we might just want to go outside. Why didn't you say all this in the first place? I tried. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. You just didn't know how to listen. Don't you remember seeing some dust today? It was swirling through the air towards the open window, remember? Yeah, I guess so. Okay then, that was me. I was just trying to get outside. I promise Mimi and I will sweep out all your dust tomorrow. Yippee! I feel so bad. Not only did I keep you trapped here away from the springtime flowers, I also made Mimi feel silly, and she was right all along. Don't waste energy feeling bad about it. Just make up your mind to fix it. Every day starts with a new beginning. So tomorrow morning, throw open the windows to let the fresh air in and work side by side with Mimi to make this room spotless. Whoa. Good morning, Mimi. Good morning, Kitty. What a beautiful day. It sure is. Come on, let's start cleaning. <laughs> There, now you two are all set for your spring cleaning. The masks will help you keep the dust out of your noses so you won't sneeze. I am very pleased that you two woke up with so much energy. Especially you, Kitty. I know how much you hate to clean your room and that you would rather be out in the garden. Yeah, well... <laughs> I don't know what came over her this morning, Mama. She just woke up talking about cleaning our room. Hey, maybe the story was true and Kitty got a visit from the dust monster. Mimi doesn't seem to remember the dust monster coming into our room. I'm sure it happened, though. No, I just realized that if the dust was trapped in our room, it couldn't be outside watching all the springtime flowers grow. And you know how much I like flowers. So I decided that I should quit being lazy and work with Mimi this morning to sweep up all the dust and put it outside where it belongs. That way the inside of the house is clean and the dust is in the garden with the flowers. At this rate, we'll be done in no time, Kitty. That's what's great about working together. Our room will be so clean. I'll bring up a nice vase of fresh flowers that everyone can enjoy. <laughs> hey, maybe tomorrow we can clean out the attic. And next week, the garage. <laughs> now, more Paradise Fun and Games. This time, it's Guess the Shape. So are you guys ready to guess the shape? I am, so let's see the first clue. Wow, what's that? Looks to me like three doors. It's an aquarium. No, that's not it. It's got vegetables inside. And beef too, what could it be? Everybody say 
fly so high, it's kitty. Result is more than worth it. It's a very special quilt for two very special little girls. Kitty and Mimi? For us? Really? Look at it, Mimi. We've got the most beautiful quilt in the whole world. Where did you get so many different pieces? It's all made from leftover pieces of cloth I saved every time I sewed something new. Really? What a great idea. We made our bedroom look new. One blanket makes all the difference in the world. Sure does. Know what? I think we should be interior decorators when we grow up. We could do it right now. Let's go look for something to decorate. To come on along with me right it's now. Fun because you'll never know what we'll see. Yeah! Come, come on, on, let's play. We'll, we'll take, take the day. day. Come on, on, let's fly away. Our imagination is the key. Because you never know what you're gonna see. <laughs> we'll take the day. Come on, let's fly away. I got really hungry all of a sudden. That's because you smell something cooking. You know, I think somebody's baking bread. You want to go see? Mm-hmm. I haven't seen a bakery anywhere. Look, there it is! The sign says bakery but it sure doesn't look like one. There's no goodies in the window. It looks like it's closed. Is anyone here? There's no baker, no customers. And look, Mimi, there's hardly any bread at all. Golly, what's going on here? This is kind of creepy. Hello, can I help <gasps> you? It looks like you're almost sold out. Your business must be very successful. <laughs> We're going broke. What? Haven't sold a thing. <clears throat> really? But we can smell fresh baked bread, and it smells wonderful. Why can't you sell it? Because no customers ever come in to try it. We could give you our opinion of it if you let us try a taste of it. Right, and we'll tell you honestly if there's something wrong with it. I'll try anything. Maybe you girls can figure out what I've been doing wrong. So let's go. Come into my kitchen and you can start working. You can sample my best wow. items fresh from the oven. Let's get to work. look great. Can we try anything we want? Anything. <laughs> I have to try this. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. Help yourselves, girls. It'll just go stale if you don't. We could never eat all of this, and even if we could, you wouldn't have anything left to sell. I wouldn't worry. I don't have any customers anyway. But your bread is so delicious, I think customers would knock the door down to get it. All the other stores in town have customers. Maybe the people who live in this town just don't like bread. Hmm. I remember when everybody loved my bread and I always sold out. Are you still using the same recipe? Always the same recipe. It's the best recipe I've ever known. You must be doing something different if the customers stop coming. If it isn't your bread, it must be something different about your bakery. Can you think of anything you've changed about the bakery? That could be the whole problem. Maybe the customers don't want to come to the bakery because the bakery used to come to them. I used to sell my bread from a push cart and brought it right to the customers' neighborhoods. A push cart? You were selling your bread outside on the street? That's how I started out in this business, selling baked goods door to door. Everybody loved to see me coming, especially the children. 
They liked my cart so much, they started hanging flowers on it and little stars and things that they made themselves. It was pretty, and the grown-ups loved it, too. Oh, that's it. The kids made the push cart a happy place, and that's what you should do here. Turn it into a happy place? How do I go about doing that? My sister and I are great interior decorators. I've never thought of using an interior decorator. You think you could help me out? Can we? You wouldn't believe what we can do. Hmm. What do you plan to do with all of this? <laughs> wow! Everything we needed! Exactly! We'll do wonders with it! Start baking bread! You're gonna have a lot of customers soon! <laughs> Can I have a snack, Dad? Hello, son! Good morning, ladies! Good, Good morning, morning to, to you. you! Fred, these girls have good business sense! Great! Do we have anything to eat? Sure! How about fresh bread? Blah! What else do we have? We just had some of your dad's bread, and it's absolutely great. You haven't had to eat it every day of your life. Guess a person gets tired of anything eventually. It's still terrific bread, and we're going to help your dad sell it. We've tried everything we could think of. I sure hope you girls have some ideas that work. We're going to redecorate the store and turn it into a happy, fun place that people will want to come to. We're expert decorators, Fred. We know what we're doing. Really? I'll show you how to make beautiful flowers. First, here's the bloom, and then we add a leaf. And of course we need a stem and another leaf. Well, that isn't right. No, it isn't. I know, a triangle would look a lot better. That's it. Yes, that looks a lot more like a real bloom. Try folding the leaves in half. That'll be a better shape. And the stem should be green. Yes, like that. Now that's a flower. Wow, I'm an artist. You really are, Kitty. Now let's make some butterflies. I don't think I've ever made a butterfly. It's easy, I'll show you. It's just a body with four wings. That's it. A butterfly should have feelers on top of its head. What are they? Feelers are long and real fuzzy, kind of like a mustache. Use that pipe cleaner. Yeah, there you go. That's a perfect butterfly. I think we should have a whole lot of butterflies. Mm-hmm. And I want to make some cars. And rainbows. Little houses. How about a kite? A balloon. And lots of different kinds of flowers. See how bright and cheerful it looks, Fred? Oh, that's pretty. What kind of store is this? A happy bakery. You know, if there's one thing I'd love, it's a happy bakery. Is it open yet? Yeah. How wonderful. We'll have to tell all of our friends. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness the girls are here to help. That was the busiest day I've ever had in my life. And look, they're all sold out, just like we said. I don't know how I could ever thank you girls enough. Oh, you don't have to thank us. We were glad to have this experience in interior decorating. Now let's bake some bread for ourselves. I'm sorry, but we can't. We've used up every last bit of our ingredients. Oh no, we're starving. Oh. Don't worry, I still have my snack. There are enough cookies here for all four of us. It's our reward for the hard work. Yay! Listen, I'm not hungry. Take this one, too. Thanks a lot. I wish there was another one. You know, I just remembered something new we learned this afternoon. What? When you break a square in half, you get two equal triangles. You can try doing some decorating in your home. Be an artist. Time for Paradise Fun and Games. This one's called Guess the Shape. There are many, many shapes hiding inside other shapes. Let's see if we can find some. First we see a shirt. Now watch this. What's it turning into? See? It's a bunny rabbit. <laughs> Let's see what other shapes we can find in the room. There's a good one, a vacuum cleaner. Let's see now. What else is it? Watch it closely. Can anybody guess what the new shape is yet? An elephant! Are there any more shapes that are hiding from us? We'll find them, won't we? Aha! This is a coat hanger. Or maybe it could be an umbrella. And watch this. It's turning into a big, beautiful white swan. <laughs> Did you see it? Okay, 
what should we look for next? Let's see now. Oh, what do we have here? What does this hat remind you of? If it had a head and legs and a tail, it could be a turtle. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Turtle. How are you today? Bye. Look around at all the shapes in your room. See how many other shapes you can find hiding there. It's fun. Time for Paradise Fun and Games. This one's called Animals, Animals. Do you see an animal hiding in here? This one's a lot like you and me. Let's turn the puzzle around, okay? Hmm, want another hint? This one lives in the jungle. Look at that. It must be pretty furry. Have you got it? It's sure starting to look like something, isn't it? Watch now! Do you know what it is? <laughs> Let's find out! Alright! Did you get it? It's a gorilla! Aren't puzzles fun? Do your trick, Coco! <laughs> Boy, way to go! <laughs> the train to Grandma's house. Hooray! We're going to Grandma's! We get to ride the train! Hooray! Come on, you two. We don't want to be late. I don't see it over here anywhere. There it is, Mimi. It was right in front of your eyes. Now, don't go scampering off by yourselves, girls. We have to stay together. Which one sells tickets to Grandma and Grandpa's house? I don't know. None of the boards has a sign that says Grandma and Grandpa. Up there. We're looking for train number 220. Oh, yeah! There it is, 220, on the very top row. Look at all those different trains going to all those different places. Hope I get to ride on them someday. I'm sure you will, Mimi. All it takes is picking a good destination and buying a ticket. May I put the money in the machine and get my own ticket, Daddy? Oh, me too. Can I, Daddy, please? It works faster if one person buys all the tickets at once so the other customers aren't kept waiting in line so long. Why would we make them wait longer? Well, dear, if each of us bought our own ticket, there would be four of us standing in line instead of just one. And if we did that, it would take us four times as long to buy our tickets. You wouldn't want the other customers to keep us waiting, so show others the same courtesy we want from them. That makes sense. That way you don't have the customers getting mad at one another. You can buy my ticket. I want everybody to know that my family's polite. Now be careful going up or down the stairs. And don't go up the middle of the stairs because some people are in a big hurry and they could accidentally knock you down. Okay! Another way they prevent people from bumping into each other is by building two stairways, one going up and the other going down. Boy, we're lucky we're here on a Sunday when it isn't so busy and crowded. Why is it so crowded on all the other days? Why? Because so many people are in a hurry to get to work or school on time. Kitty's right. Can you imagine what it would be like if there was only one stairway and some people were trying to go up and others were trying to go down at the same time? Nobody would be able to move in either direction. Gosh, that would be so awful. Okay, then. We use the upstairs to walk up. And we come down the downstairs being careful not to bump into anybody. Good girls. You learn fast. When you get here, you have to be especially careful. Your mother's right, because when you're down here near the tracks, you have to watch out for the trains, as well as the other passengers crowding and pushing and trying to get on and off the trains. Why is everyone always in such a hurry? What's the rush? Because the train doesn't wait if you're late. You have to get on before the door closes. And don't try to squeeze in if the doors are already starting to close, though. That's very dangerous, okay? Okay! I just love traveling on the train, don't you, Mimi? In fact, when I grow up, I think I might want a train of my own to live on so I could just spend my whole life traveling. That sounds wonderful! I'm so excited, I can't stand it! Me too! <laughs> We're gonna have a real adventure today, Kitty. <laughs> no fair. The train won't wait for us, but we have to wait forever for it. 
We're early. The train's right on time. It'll be here any second. I don't see it. I don't even hear it. Where is it? Kitty, you have to stay behind the white mark. It's for your own safety. Oops. I won't do it again. I promise. When's it gonna come? Any moment. And remember what I told you about getting on. You wait for the people getting off. Let them clear the doorway first. Why aren't there two doors? There are, but you still have to wait. It's a rule. You're polite, aren't you? Yes. Then you don't have to worry, because all you have to do is be polite, and you'll know you're obeying the rules, because all of the rules are about respecting other people. Oh! So, trains don't have separate doors for getting on and getting off, but some things do. What are some of the things that have different doors and different rules for getting on and off? Yes, we don't want to make mistakes. Well, for instance, if you remember when we take the bus to town to go shopping, we always get on through the front door, because that's where we pay our fare. People getting on use the front door, and people getting off use the back, so they don't bump into each other. That's right. I have a question. What if the bus only has one door? Always wait for the passengers getting off first. And do you know why that is? To make room for people getting on? Right. And can you think of another place where we let passengers off first? A place that only has one door. Um... um do you know? I can't think of anything at all. What if we're shopping in a department store? Wait a minute, I think I've got it. It's the elevator, right? Right. Always wait for the people getting off. That's how we can always remember the rule. If there's just one door, we wait for the people getting off first. We're really learning how to travel. <laughs> Attention, please. The train is now arriving. Please be sure to wait behind the white line. It wasn't her fault. You have to be especially careful whenever you're walking on a moving train. It was my fault. I got too excited about the castle. I'm the one to blame. It wasn't your fault, Kitty. We, we apologize, apologize ma'am. I have a little girl of my own, and she also gets too excited sometimes. Believe me, girls, I understand. I'm sorry I embarrassed you, Mom. Please forgive me. I didn't mean to get you into trouble. We are both to blame. We should have listened to Mom and Dad. Whenever we go traveling, we try to learn as much as we can. And one of the things you girls learn today is that every rule has a good reason. That's why we follow them. That makes sense. That's another rule we have to remember. Every rule has a reason. Sorry. You learned it's dangerous to walk on a moving train, and you won't make that mistake again. So don't feel bad, because we all learn by correcting our mistakes. Right. We're learning a lot. <laughs> That's right. If you learn by making mistakes, we're both world champion learners. <laughs> Time for Paradise Fun and Games. This one's called Kitty's Caterpillar Quiz. There's something hiding in these ivy leaves. Mr. Caterpillar will help us find it. Time to go to work. Watch closely now. <laughs> Now, 
He's uncovered something here. What is it? We need to see some more, please. Okay. <laughs> a doorbell button? A crater on the moon? <laughs> what do you think it is? I think we need to see some more, please. Okay. <laughs> they're round, and they look a little bit like eyes, but there's no face there. This is really a strange one. Show us some more, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that doesn't help much. Can you see it? It doesn't have any legs. Show us more. A lot more. <laughs> we'll see who gets it first, okay? My friends will help me work fast. I know what it is now. Can you see it? It's a snail. That's right. We got it. That was a hard one, wasn't it? I love puzzles. Aren't they fun? See you next time. This is a special place decorated with everything you've ever made out of paper. 
Hey, you're right. There's the bird I just made. Is that one mine? Uh, yes. I'm afraid that's the one you gave up on. Remember, Kitty? You said it was too hard. But look on the bright side. Finishing something that's hard to do is a challenge, and that can be rewarding. Oh, I never really thought about it that way, but I guess it is true. Can we try again? Sure you can. I gave up making my airplane because I felt frustrated. But maybe that's just the way a challenge feels? That's right. Mimi, let's make the best paper planes we've ever made. Okay! Great! Now, if you need any assistance at all, I'm here to help! Okay, we're ready. First, fold the paper carefully. Like this? That's right. That looks good, Kitty. I think I got it now. When we're all done, let's see which plane flies farther. Okay. I bet mine will be the winner. <laughs> I think that both of them are great paper airplanes. Ta-da! Okay, on your mark, get set. One, two, three, go! Go pink! Go yellow! Oh, no! Oh! Yay! Yellow's still flying! We want to make something different now. All right, then. What would you like to make? A boat. But if we sail our boats, we'll have to put them in a stream. You think they'll float? Gee, I don't know. I'm sure that between the two of you, they'll float just fine. Are you ready to try them out? Yeah, let's do it! <laughs> On your mark, get set, go! Look at them go! Wow, they look great! Hooray, hooray, they're floating! Yay, we so did it! Go! <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, what should we make now, Mimi? Hey, let's make something completely different. Flowers are nice. Want to try them? Sounds like fun. I love flowers. I'm gonna make a pink daisy. <laughs> You're doing great, girls. Thanks. How's that? Very good. I could make paper flowers all day long. Me too. Let's make a whole garden full of flowers. Yeah! Guess what I made? A flower that can move itself all around. You made a moving flower? Yep. Let's put it in the garden. Okay, there. I guess I just like things that move. Hey, what's happening? I'm afraid it's a windstorm. It was sunny a minute ago. I got you. Hold on tight and don't let go. I've never seen a windstorm like this before. Oh, no. Our poor flowers. Oh, I'm afraid of thunder. I'm afraid of lightning. Oh. But don't Once in a while, a storm comes through and blows everything away. Then let's build a stronger city that won't get blown down. Do you have any strong paper? Uh, there's some at the paper factory. Great, then let's get going. Wow, this is the biggest piece of paper I've ever seen. Me too! What should we make first? Hey, I know. Let's make a beautiful castle, Mimi. A castle? Kitty, I don't know how to make a castle. Well, I can help. We can make a tall castle for a beautiful prince and princess to live in. If you can help us with the design, we'll do the work. I'm here to help. That is if you promise not to give up this time. Yes, sir, I promise. This time I'm not giving up until the whole thing's finished. Are you sure, Kitty? We've never made a castle before. I know it sounds hard, but that's what makes it a challenge. Okay! Well, let's get started. That's good! Fold it all the way back to the end. Ready? One, two, three. Now cut that piece in half. Good job! That should do it! beautiful castle ever. Yay! Oh, Yay! Yeah! <laughs> you can't even tell it's made out of paper. And now the prince and princess can, can live, live happily, happily ever, ever after. after. Farewell, my beautiful paper castle! Stand strong against the wind. Goodbye, bye-bye, and, and thank you, Mr. Mouse. You're welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. See you again. Go home, Mimi? You bet! And the prince and princess live 
lived happily ever after in their beautiful castle in the land of paper. And one day, he would be king, and Princess Kitty would be his queen. <laughs> Princess Mimi and the prince danced and played every day in their beautiful paper castle. And there, they lived happily ever after. Fun and games. Get ready for Kitty's Caterpillar Quiz. Welcome to Hello Kitty's Caterpillar Quiz. Guess who's hiding in the leaf castle today? Mr. Caterpillar, could you please give us some hints? I'd be happy to, Miss Kitty. Let's start with this delicious corner over here. A claw. I wonder if it's a crab. More hints, please, Mr. Caterpillar. All ready. Coming up. The Oh my, that looks like a giant earthworm. Can you eat some more of the picture, please, Mr. Caterpillar? Sure! <laughs> now I can see its eyes. Do you know what it is? I'm not sure yet. Hmm. More clues, please. Okay, you got it! <laughs> hey, look at that! That's a tail! I think I know what it is now. Eat some more, eat some more! You guessed the right answer. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> and now it's time for animals. Animals. Hello, everyone. Are you ready to play? There's an animal hiding in there. <laughs> Can you guess what it is? That looks like a tummy. Let's see more. There's a tail. <laughs> Looks like a pretty big animal. <laughs> hey, it's got four long legs. Do you know what it is yet? Wait a minute. It looks like there's something on its back. Oh, now I know what it is. Do you? It's a special animal that can weigh over 1,500 pounds when it grows up. It's a camel! <laughs> Did you know that camels can walk 25 miles a day with almost no water? <laughs> Bye! Sizing things up. There's nothing like a nice cup of tea in the afternoon. Mimi, Kitty, snack time! Coming, Mama! <laughs> mm. I have four lovely cakes. Which one would you like? Um, they all look good. I'll have the strawberry. I'll have the chocolate. Here you go, Mimi. Mm. And there you are, Kitty. <gasps> Can I have a bite of your cake? You have your own cake. Just a little bit. Promise just a little? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's delicious, thanks. Hey, that wasn't just a little, that was a whole bunch. Oh. Then you can have a little bit of my dessert, okay? Okay. Hey. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Mimi, I said you could have a little bit of my dessert, and then you ate a whole lot of it. Well, that's because you did the same thing. You said you'd take a little, and then you took a lot. Uh-uh. I had a little tiny taste of your cake, and you ate a whole bunch of mine. I had a little piece of your cake, and you had some of mine, so now we're even. Hmm, well. I guess we're even then. Okay, then. <laughs> oh. Hey, you know what?
that, Mimi? We said a little, but I'm not really sure how much a little is. How about you? Hmm. I say what you mean, I'm not sure myself. Hmm? A whole cake, a piece, a little bit. Hmm. I think that I took a little bit, and a little piece is a lot less than half. It's only a little. Hmm. A whole cake, a piece, a lot. I think you took a lot of my cake. Well, I don't. I think I only took a little. Yeah, you're wrong. Is everything all right? Are you enjoying your cake? Yep, it's really good. Then why do you two look so unhappy? What's the matter? We're confused. About what? Exactly how much is a lot and how much is a little? Well, why would you ask that? Hey, that wasn't just a little, that was a whole bunch. Oh, then you can have a little bit of my dessert, okay? Okay. I'm <laughs> You could have a little bit of my dessert, and then you ate a whole lot of it. Well, that's because you did the same thing. You said you'd take a little, and then you took a lot. Well, now I see. That is confusing. Do you know the answer? Why, yes, I do. Please tell us, Mama Kitty, and I want to understand the difference, too. Let me try to explain. As you girls know, a little and a lot are very different. A lot is usually a large amount of something, while a little can be just a tiny piece. Oh, yeah, like the tiny piece of Mimi's cake I took. Right. But she didn't take a tiny piece. She took more than that, and I just had a little piece of hers. All right, so Mimi thought that Kitty's piece of chocolate cake was too big, and Kitty thought that it wasn't very big at all. Isn't that about right? Yes. Well, that's because it depends on how you look at it. Everyone sees things a little differently in their own way. Really? I see. She's saying that your idea of what a little piece is might not be the same as my idea because we all have different points of view on just about everything. Like Papa always says, different eyes see different ideas. I don't remember him saying that. But your Papa's a wise man. You should listen to him. Of course, that's just your point of view, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm home. How are my girls? We're good, Papa. We want to know what the difference is between a little bit and a whole lot. What? Now, why would you want to know that? Because this is what happened. Well, well, now I see. That is a rather difficult question. We don't exactly understand why a little and a lot is so different for everyone. So we thought we should ask you what you think. Well, a little bit of something is a smaller amount, but it can't be measured exactly unless you know what it is. Even still, it's not very easy to describe. Is the same thing true for a lot? Mm-hmm, except a lot is actually a larger amount. And the funny thing about it is what's a little to me may seem like a whole lot to you. What do you mean? Well, like walking to the store. <laughs> Well, I don't get it at all. Whenever we walk to the store, it seems like it's far away, so that's a lot. But it's not very far for you, is it, Papa? No, it doesn't seem like a very far walk when you're all grown up, but it did seem like a very long walk when I was your size. Oh, I understand. Let's think of some more, okay? All right, um... Let's ask Mama what she thinks. Dear, why don't you sit down and join us? The girls have something they want to ask you. Smell that. I think it's an apple pie. And we love pie. Let's see if we can have some. Just a little tiny piece. Can we have some? Not yet. The pie's not quite ready. But after dinner's done, you can have some. That's too long. To me, it doesn't seem like a very long time to wait at all. You see, when I'm cooking dinner, time goes by fast. But when you're waiting to eat, it seems longer. Especially for you, you don't like to wait. You don't like to wait either. What about the other way around? Can you think of any examples when time seemed to go too fast and you didn't have enough? Yeah, when we're late for school. Yeah, or when we play in the swimming pool. We don't ever want to get out. Time flies when you're having fun, as the saying goes. But when you're not, it can go by very slowly. Why does it go so slow? Well, I don't know. It's not fair. Well, I can think of a few times when we said we were going to the park to stay for a little while. But once we got there, you wanted to stay all day. Hmm. 
And when we all go shopping, you say that you'll be in the toy section for a little while, and then you never want to go. Ready, girls? Not yet, Mama. Isn't that true? What about when I say you can have a little candy and you take a lot of it? Oh, okay, I guess you're right. We'll try not to do it again, we promise. Yeah, we really promise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you two know the difference between a little and a lot. Now you can see why it means something different to almost everyone. Guess I did take a lot of your chocolate cake. That's okay. The apple pie should be ready now, but I'm sure you don't want any. You already had dessert. Hey! <laughs> now that's a whole lot of teasing. <laughs> <laughs> while you slept in. Well, I'm almost done. You want to go play? Sure, but give me a minute. I want to finish this chapter first. Maybe then we can go to the park. Kitty, Mimi, it's just about time for you to come in, clean up your toys, and set the table for dinner. Not fair. There are always so many chores to do. Yeah, too bad we don't have a robot to do all our chores for us. Yeah, really, too bad. Imagine never having to do another chore. Hey, Mimi, that's it. I'll bet with a little imagination and our magic balloon, we can find ourselves just the robot we need. Way up in the blue sky, past the clouds, away we'll fly. Finding an adventure, we won't know where until we're there. We're flying now and having fun. Say hello to everyone. Picture pretty. To come on along with me right it's now. Fun because you'll never know what we'll see. Yeah! Come, come on, on, let's play. We'll, we'll take, take the day. day. Come, come on, on, let's fly away. Our imagination is the key. Because you never know what you're gonna see. <laughs> we'll take the day. Come on, let's fly away. <laughs> Kitty, I hate to tell you this. 
Now I really wish we had a robot to get us down from here. Me too. But I doubt if we're gonna find one here. <gasps> clean, clean and beautify, clean. Whoa, Mimi, look, a robot. Remove objects from tree, clean and beautify. Okay, hang on tight. Oh. Whoa. Identify object in tree. That's our balloon. It doesn't belong up there. We got it stuck somehow. Could you please help us get it down? Balloon does not belong. Remove, clean and beautify. Oh. Oh. Must remove object, must clean and beautify. Hey, what kind of robot are you? Must clean and beautify. Remove balloon, remove balloon. Remove balloon, clean and beautify. Remove balloon. Huh? Remove balloon, remove balloon, remove balloon. He's fast, but what's he doing? I don't know, but I've got a bad feeling. Don't worry, here he comes. Task complete. Where's our balloon? <gasps> Kitty, look! <gasps> this is it! No way! Huh? Our balloon, it's ruined! Clean uh? and beautify. Clean hey, come back here! Beautify. What about our balloon? Come on, we've got to go after him. Right! Clean and beautify. Clean and... Must beautify flower bed. Task complete, Ralph. Resume primary program. Clean and beautify. <laughs> that robot is out of control. <laughs> oh, what has that robot done now? Robot? He's yours? Why, yes. But I seem to have misplaced him. Have you seen him? Yeah, he cut up our balloon. And ran away. Why would your robot do something like that, mister? Please call me Professor. Hey, there he is! Clean and beautiful. Clean and beautify. Let's get him. Huh? Wait for me. It is my robot, after all. Must clean and beautify. Pow. Must clean and beautiful. There he is! Now what is he doing? Why don't you stop him, Professor? I've tried. He won't respond. But don't worry, his batteries will run out sooner or later. I still don't understand why he's doing all of this. Well, you see, when I built him, I programmed him to do all of my chores. Really? Then he went haywire. Hey! Look, he's getting away! Don't let him out of your sight! Ropes are dirty, clean, and beautified. Professor, he's right over here! We've got to stop him before he messes up everything! Agreed. What do you have in mind? You go that way, Professor. We'll circle around and surround him. Right. Let's go. Clean and beautify. Clean out. Easy now, Mr. Robot. We're your friends. We want to help you. <gasps> <gasps> Quick, after him. <laughs> Why did I ever build this thing? Let's hurry up, everybody. He's starting to get away. Clean and beautify. Beautify and clean. <laughs> Clean and clean, beautify, and beautify. Clean and clean, beauty, clean, 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 beauty, go, beauty. Clean and go. Grab him quick, don't let him get up. So what do you think is wrong with him, Professor? My theory is that I connected his control wires in reverse when I built him, so everything his programming told him to do, he would do the opposite. So 
what are you going to do with him? I'm going to cut his main wires and reconnect them correctly. How do you know which one goes where? Well, I think the green and red wires are the problem. I just need to switch them. At least I think that will do it. Now stop! Huh? Professor, you said you needed to switch the red and green wires around, and you were about to cut the blue one. Relax, Mimi. I'm sure the professor knows what he's doing. I didn't mean to be rude. I just thought you were making a mistake. You were absolutely right, my dear. I was. I seem to be so absent-minded lately. I see. Kind of like a robot. Yes, well, <clears throat> I'll just make the repairs to the robot, and then we'll see about getting your balloon flying again. And, uh, whoops, <laughs> I nearly did it again. There. Now we'll just let the robot put it all together. Assemble balloon. Assemble balloon. Look at him go! At this rate, we'll be up in the air in no time. Now let's get some hot air in this thing and see if she flies. Excellent. It looks as though the glue is holding just fine. Whoa, hey, wait, get me down from here. Oh, no! Kitty stuck to the balloon! She must have leaned against the wet glue. It's very strong, you know. Would everybody stop talking and figure out a way to get me down from here? Who cares about the glue? Remove Kitty from balloon. Remove Kitty. Uh, mm, mm, Remove Kitty. Oh. Uh, uh, that hurt. What's the idea? That's the second time you dropped me today. <laughs> <laughs> What are you laughing at? I guess the robot pulled a little harder than he should have. <laughs> uh, my jumpsuit, it's ruined. Gee, Kitty, maybe you can start a whole new style. <laughs> Get robots. From now on, I'm doing everything myself. Now it's time for Paradise Fun and Games. This one's called Battle of the Shapes. Today we're going to see who's stronger, the sphere or the triangle. It should be a contest of geometric proportions. In this corner, the challenger, the big blue sphere. In this corner is the champ, Triangle Red. It looks like they're raring to go. Let's get started. And there's the bell to start the competition. Oh, no, look. Red's got Big Blue in big trouble already. Wow, great escape by Big Blue. Looks like he's back in the game. Blue's trying the same move against Red Triangle, but can't seem to pull it off either. And here comes Big Blue again, and he's got Red on the run. I think Red Triangle's got other ideas, because he comes roaring back to turn the tide. Wow! Boy, Big Blue just went to pieces that time. Red wins. Good job. And now for something very special. Big Blue Sphere and Red Triangle come up with a creative example of what you can do when you work together. Check it out. That's really something, isn't it? <laughs> Just goes to show what former foes can do as friends. Bye! Here's more Paradise Fun and Games. This time, it's Clay Mania. Today, we're gonna play a game of Paper, Rock, Scissors. So, we should get started. Let's see what we've got. A fist stands for rock, and the two fingers stand for scissors. Well, who wins? Try as it might, the scissors can't cut through the rock. But the rock can break the scissors, so the rock is the winner. That was so cool! I think I'm gonna stick with the rock. Oh, yeah? Well, in that case, I'll go with paper. An open hand stands for paper. Now, paper might not sound very strong, but in this game, it is. You see, paper can wrap itself around the rock, and so is the winner of round two. Okay, last round. I'm gonna stick with the scissors this time. Okay, no problem. I'm gonna stick with paper. Uh-oh, bad choice. No way. The paper already proved how strong it could be. It'll wrap itself around the scissors and then it'll be all over. Yes way. Paper may be able to wrap, but scissors are able to cut. Too bad for paper. Scissors win. That's, That's it for now. now. See you next time. <laughs> What's in store? Thanks for coming over for our play date. I gotta go. Bye, see you tomorrow. What happened to our play date? I guess Mindy and Sasha couldn't come over today. Well, I'm tired of playing with dolls. Yeah, me too. What now? We've done everything already. Yeah, I know. 
there isn't anything left to do. What would be fun? I know! Let's each build our favorite store. That's an easy one for me. A bookstore. Well, that's definitely a store I would visit. Books are great! What kind of store will you build, Kitty? I don't know, Mimi. There's so many wonderful kinds I can't decide. I know. How about a candy store? Or a flower shop? Oh, wait, a stationery store. <laughs> All right. Well, you'll figure something out, Kitty. I'm gonna go find my book. I might need. I don't think this shirt will fit me. And goodness knows Kitty needs the alarm clock. It sure is a nice assortment, but I think maybe I'll just get some pretty paper to go along with my new pencils. An excellent choice, madame. I'll get your paper and pencils right away. Thank you for coming. Come back again. Now what do I want from Mimi's bookstore? I'll take this, this, and this one. You are just going to love these books, madam. Thank you, and have a great day. Say hi to the family. I will. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Don't forget to clean up when you're done, girls. Mama always does that. Just when we're having fun, she tells us to clean up. So what's wrong with that? Sometimes I'd just like to leave all our stuff out so we could come back and play later if we wanted to. Sounds messy. It wouldn't have to be, and our toys would always be there to play with. If we leave things lying around, they'll get broken. I've never had anything get broken before. But it's my stuff. I don't understand what's wrong with you today, Mimi. We've always shared our toys and stuff, but today you seem to be getting upset by it. Well, the problem is, Kitty, that I'm tired of you getting into my things without asking me first. But Mimi, I've never asked your permission before. I know, but lately it started to bother me. Hello? Yay, Papa's home! Let's talk to him about it. I'm home. Oh, hello, girls. What are you up to in there? Hi, we're playing store. Would you like to buy a book for my bookstore? Let's see. I don't think I need any books right now. So, no thanks. How about my store? That's hard to say. You have quite a variety. Exactly what kind of store is this? I'm running an emporium. A what? An emporium of all my things. Papa, Mimi's mad at me because I borrowed some of her stuff. I see. Is this true, Mimi? Well, she didn't ask first. So, Kitty, did you borrow some of Mimi's things without asking her first? Yes, sir. I guess I did. Then I expect Mimi would be mad at you. To borrow other people's things without asking them first is like telling them that you don't care about their privacy. Yeah, that's what I've been trying to tell her. It's all about respect. We all have things we consider our own. Books, diaries, photo albums. How about my toothbrush? Yes, and pencils and art supplies, too. We should always respect others' possessions just as we would like them to respect ours. I know. But Kitty said I should share. Well, she's right. 
How can I be right about her sharing her stuff, and I be right about her asking permission first? Well, you should share your things, but the choice to share should be yours, not Kitty's. Out of respect. That's right. What are some other ways we can show respect to others? I don't know. That's a good question. Me neither. Come on, try. Hmm. Tell you what, let's make it a game. Yeah, okay. Yeah, what kind of game? Let's see if the two of you can think of the best way to show respect to other people. I'll bet you can do it if you think about it. Oh, I got it. Hey, I haven't even had a chance to think yet. All right, gotta think. Hmm. Oh, I can't get it. Can I have a hint, please? All right, Kitty, the best way for you to show respect to others is to treat them and their belongings the same way that you would want to be treated by them. That's easy. That way, you'll never have to worry about not showing proper respect for people. Boy, I guess I didn't treat Mimi with very much respect. It was wrong to take her things. Good, Kitty. I'm glad you realized that because respect for others begins right in your own home. Like with your parents or your sister? That's right. Now you two start cleaning up. No, we want to play some more, please. Okay, for a little while longer, though it seems to me you'd have a lot more fun if you only had one general store. Why? Because then you could each take turns being the customer. That way you would each get the fun of running the store and you wouldn't have to wait for your mother or I to wander by. Might as well combine the stores. I'm almost out of books. Yeah, and most of this stuff is yours. Hey, what do you say we go and get some of your stuff for our store? Okay. Hey, you two, now don't forget to clean this up and put it away when you're done. <laughs> oh, Papa, now you sound like Mama. I want to be the customer first, okay? <laughs> you really think that I sound like Mom? <laughs> hey, here's more Paradise Fun and Games. This time it's Animals, Animals. There's an animal hiding in the cube, and all you have to do to get him out is guess what kind of animal he is. Let's get guessing. Well, from this we can tell he's brown and furry. He also lives way up high but gathers food down on the ground. So, do you have any ideas of what it is yet? Let's move on. So he's got big feet and claws for climbing. Have you figured it out yet? Whatever he is, he likes to eat nuts and insects. Last clue. Looks like a big bushy tail. Now it's time for you to make your final guess. It's a tree squirrel, and a pretty big one at that. I hope you guessed correctly and had fun. I'm sure I did. See you next time. Bye! <laughs> Hehehehe <laughs>